All right, what we're going to be doing in this tutorial is reviewing how to find the surface area of a cube, a rectangular prism, a square pyramid, and a triangular prism. And we're going to go over 10 problems that I derived from a test that I created for my students. All right, for this first problem, we have to calculate the surface area of this object shown on the graph paper here, which is a triangular prism. So the first thing that I'm going to do is find the area of this triangular surface right here. So if we take a look at its base from here to here, it has a base length of 6, and it has a height of 4. Now, one thing that we should notice about this triangle here is if we were to take the one at the bottom, which is congruent or identical to this triangle, we could slide it up here to make a parallelogram. So what we can do is just treat both of these triangles as one parallelogram. And to find the area of a parallelogram, we just do the base times its height. So if we multiply 6 times 4, that's going to give us an area of 24. Now, if I wanted to just find the area of this single triangle, I could do base times height and then divide by 2, which would give us 12. But because this triangle is congruent to that triangle, 12 plus 12 would put us back at 24. All right, now what we have to do is find the area of these three rectangles and add that area to 24. Well, I could treat all three of these rectangles as one large rectangle. I could see that this distance right here is 4, and from this point all the way to this point is a distance of 5 plus 6 more, which is 11, plus 5 more, which is 16. So we have a 4 by 16 rectangle, which would give us an area of 64. Now, if you're more comfortable just finding the area of each rectangle, that's okay if you do that as well. So like if I just took the area of this rectangle, this is 4 by 5, so that would give us an area of 20. This is a 4 by 6 rectangle, which is an area of 24. And this is a 4 by 5 rectangle, which is an area of 20. So if we add 20, 20, and 24 together, that does give us 64. So let's combine the area of 24 and 64, and that gives us a total of 88 square units. All right, let's go to the next problem. All right, for this problem, we have to find the surface area of a rectangular prism. Now, one way that I like to find the area of a rectangular prism is by doing something called the Y method. So what I like to do is draw what looks like a capital letter Y. And then I take my three dimensions and write them at the end of each one of these lines here. So we have a 5, 8, and a 12. And it's really not important in which order you write them. And then what we do is we just multiply two numbers at a time. So we have 5 times 8, which is 40. And we write that answer kind of where these lines converge. 8 times 12 is 96. 5 times 12 is 60. All right, now these three numbers that we ended up coming up with is the area of three of our six sides. So there is a surface with an area of 40, a surface with an area of 60, and a surface with an area of 96. And if you look at these three surfaces here, this is the largest one. So this one has an area of 96. This surface right here has an area of 60. And this one right here has an area of 40. So if we take these three numbers and we add them together, we end up getting half of our surface area. 196 square centimeters represents only half of our surface area. So what we have to do is double this to get our final answer. So this is 12, and this is 19, and this is 3. So the surface area of this rectangular prism is equal to 392 square centimeters. All right, let's do the next problem. All right, now for a cube, we should understand that it is composed of six congruent surfaces. So what we can do is start by finding the area of one surface. And because this surface here is a square, we know that its length and width will be identical. 
So the area of one of the square surfaces for this example would be 9 times 9, which is 81. And because all six surfaces are congruent to each other, we just take this number and we multiply it by 6. So that would give us a total of 486 square meters. All right, let's go to the next example. All right, when finding the area of a square pyramid, which is what this object is right here, I like to use the formula 2 multiplied by the base of the pyramid multiplied by the slant height of the pyramid plus b to the second power. All right, so really what we're looking for is two different values to plug into our equation here. So we always start with the number 2 in our equation. Then we identify the length of the base, which is at the bottom of our pyramid. And it is 10 feet. So we're going to substitute this letter B with 10. And then we have to multiply by the slant height, which is 8 feet. Now, 2 times 10 times 8 will actually give us the area of the four triangular surfaces. And after we figure out what that is, we have to add to that the area of our square base, which is calculated by taking the base, which in this case is 10 feet, and squaring it or raising it to the second power, which means you multiply that number by itself. So if we multiply 2 times 10 by 8, that gives us 160. So the area of the four triangular surfaces is 160. And then the area of the square base is going to be 100. So we have a total surface area of 260 square feet. All right, let's go to the next example. All right, for this problem, we just have to find the area of this rectangular prism here. And we could, if we wanted to, literally count each individual square unit, uh, but that would take a while. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to find the area of each one of these rectangles. So we have a rectangle here that is a 3 by 5 rectangle, which is 15. And the one that would be on the opposite side when folded would be congruent to that one. So I know this one right here would be 15. This rectangle is a 4 by 5 rectangle, which results in an area of 20. And the one that would be opposite it would be congruent. So this rectangle is also 20. And this right here is a 3 by 4 rectangle, which results in 12. And this one right here is covered by 12 square units. So what we have to do is add all of these together. So we know that 20 plus 20 is 40. And we know that 15 plus 15 is 30. And of course, we have 12 plus 12, which is 24. And if we add these areas together, we end up getting 94 square units. All right, let's go to the next problem. All right, now this right here is the net of a square pyramid. So what we're going to do is use our formula 2 times base times slant height plus base to the second power. So we always start with the number 2, and then we have to identify the length of our pyramid's base. So when it's in its net form, what we do is we go to the bottom of one of the triangular surfaces and just measure the base of that triangle. So from here to here is a distance of 6. And the slant height would be from the top of a triangular surfaces down to its base. And this slant height right here is a distance of 5. And then we have to add to that the area of our square base, which is calculated by taking the base, which in this case is 6, and multiplying it by itself, which is squaring it. Now remember, when you have more than one operation, we have to follow the order of operations, which means we have to perform all of our multiplication before we perform addition. So let's take 2 times 6, which is 12, and multiply 12 by 5. That gives us 60, plus we have 6 times 6, which is 36. And when adding these two results together, we get a total surface area of 96 square units. All right, let's go to the next example. 
All right, so we have a rectangular prism here, and I'm going to do what I did with the previous example, which is to do the Y method. So we have three sides, the length, width, and height. One of the dimensions is a measure of four, another is a measure of five, and our third measure is eight. So a four by five rectangle would result in an area of 20, a four by eight rectangle would result in an area of 32, and a five by eight rectangle results in an area of 40. So we're gonna add up these three results. 40 plus 20 is 60, and 60 plus 32 is 92. And this represents half of our surface area. So what we have to do is either add that number to itself, which would give us 184, or we would multiply this by two. So the answer for this problem is 184 square centimeters. All right, on to the next problem. All right, we have a cube here. So remember, we just have to take the number shown, which in this case is 10, and multiply it by itself. So we can get the area of just one of the six surfaces. So for this cube, 10 times 10 is 100. And we have to take that area and multiply it by six. And that results in 600 square centimeters. All right, on to the next problem. All right, what we have here is a triangular prism. And what we can do when we have two congruent right triangles is we can treat that as a single rectangle. This triangle down here could be flipped over and slid above to be joined with the other triangle to make a rectangle. So what we have here is a three by four rectangle, which together results in an area of 12. So the area of each triangle would be six, but if we double that, that would give us 12. So I just treated both of these triangles as a single rectangle. Now this rectangle right here is a five by four rectangle, which results in an area of 20. This rectangle is five by three, which is 15. And this rectangle actually is not a rectangle, it is a square, it is a five by five square, which has an area of 25. So we have to add 25 to 20 to 15 and to 12. Now a triangular prism has five surfaces. So we should understand that this number right here, the number 12 represents the area of two surfaces or our two triangles. So if we add this together, we get 12 here and we get seven here. So the surface area of this triangular prism is 72 square units. All right, on to our next problem. Okay, we have a square pyramid here, so we're going to use our formula two times base times slant height plus base to the second power. So what we're gonna do is multiply two times our base of five and multiply that by our slant height, which is eight in this case. And then we have to go back to our base, which is five, and square it. All right, so we have two times five, which is 10, and 10 times eight, which is 80, plus five squared, which is 25. So 80 is the area of all of the triangular surfaces, and 25 is the area of our square base. And together, that results in a total surface area of 105 square feet. All right, so I hope that this tutorial about surface area was helpful. Please don't forget to subscribe to my channel so you can become informed as new tutorials become available.